Good day and welcome to Motor Rose Music. I am Jeff Thiel, the host of the show. Got another unboxing here. Today it's from, the guitar is from Fogil. I, I, I assume that's the way it's pronounced. F-O-J-I-L-L. -I, -L. I can't think of another way to pronounce it. Fogil is what I'm going to go with. And, uh, of course, I got this on Amazon. Now, I got it on uh, some, uh, it, it was a pretty good deal that was on it. I, I got it for under 100 bucks. It was like $95. This is currently selling for $169.99. All right. And it is a Strat style guitar. It's another one of those relic ones. I had done a uh, Tele style uh, relic guitar as well that I, I really liked and I have replaced the pickups in and some hardware and stuff. Don't know if I'm going to do that with this one because I haven't played it yet. But I've got the box untaped. Let's get to unboxing. There we go. Er, yeah, there, we, there it is. All right. Get the box out of the way. All right. Oh, I forgot. It comes with a gig bag. All right. And let's get that out of there. See you later, box. And yeah, pretty well padded here. Um, you've got this bubble wrap. Now this came in a bigger Amazon box. So it was that box within this ridiculously sized Amazon box. So uh, padded gig bag. I'll show that right here. Nice. Uh, I, again, I, you know, it. You know, it goes to show you how low the cost must be to make stuff in China and uh, similar places, but mostly China, to be able to add a uh, a nice padded gig bag like this and still sell them for, you know, 170 bucks. Uh, it's pretty crazy. All right, doesn't open up the whole way. Uh, it does have a necktie down here. So here, I'll let you... Yeah, it kind of stops in a weird spot, but... Uh, you know, decent enough. Oops. Uh, let's take this off. And I got this usual styrofoam wrap on it. All right. There we go. Come on. God, I hate this stuff. Right, does it really do anything besides just cover it? Ah, there she is. It's a girl. Ah, just kidding. It is pink. I like pink guitars. I don't know what it is. I, I, I've got two of them now. All right. It is obviously a Strat style. Let's uh, give the close-up here uh, so you can see the relic on it. Uh, yep, typical Strat style guitar here. Uh, this is more of an open pour. This isn't uh, real smooth. You can see the grain in it real well. Uh, I'll put pictures up here if uh, it's probably not coming in on my side shot here. But uh, yeah, uh, so let's real quick, uh, we'll go over the, uh, the specs of this guitar. Uh, again, this is a, a Fogil. Uh, it's a Strat style guitar. They say light relic, but uh, eh, I would say medium. It's certainly not light, not on this one I have. Of course, they're all going to be different. So there's no real name of this thing. It's called Fogil Light Relic Vintage Aged Guitar. You know, that's, that's a great name if I've ever heard one. Uh, so uh, it says mahogany body. Uh, from what I can see, uh, you know, where they've uh, scuffed the paint, yeah, it looks like mahogany. Um, it's got a bit of weight to it. Um, I'll uh, have to try and weigh this uh, thing to see how much it is. It's probably at least seven pounds, I would say, uh, for sure. So mahogany body, which is a, a little weird for a Strat style. It has a roasted maple neck. Um, see, we can see that there. Yeah, roasted, oh, excuse me, Canadian maple neck and a rosewood fingerboard. Uh, and it says genuine rosewood. It certainly looks like rosewood. Um, let's see if we can get that. I'll, I'll probably just do pictures because I don't know how well those side shots will do. Um, and it's got Cluson style uh, vintage tuners, um, except they don't, uh, that's odd, they don't uh, 
uh, go through the top of the post. It's through the side of the post. But the backs of them look just like the Cluson Deluxe. But that's a little strange, but whatever. Uh, so what, what I can see that's kind of odd visibly is they've got, uh, you know, like a mint guard on here. Those aren't familiar. Some of the old uh, Fender pick guards, they, they had a layer of a, a white, black, white kind of scheme. And uh, the black, I think it was, the black would kind of bleed through over time. And the white would take this green, get a green tint to it like this has. And they call them green guards. Um, but they have bright white, you know, knobs on this and pickup covers. Why not just put like the yellow white like they would be if this was, you know, this is supposed to be a relic guitar to look aged. Uh, they went ahead and put the, the mint guard on there and then they put bright white covers on everything, even the tip. Just, you know, put like, you know, aged white, the yellowish kind of thing. That's, you know, if I like this guitar and uh, this certainly looks like, you know, being that I had $95 in it, looks like a candidate that I could... Uh, put pickups in. I have a set of other uh, vintage style tuners that I got with um, that Senstar uh, Telecaster. Now I replaced those with Wilkinson Cluson style vintage tuners, uh, but they had decent tuners. I'll probably just put those in here uh, on this one because I like, you know, if you're going to do vintage, I like the top load. Um, anyways, let's see here. What have I forgotten to say? Uh, let's, uh, let's go ahead and get this thing tuned up. Um, that's not too bad. Um, so let's get it tuned up. Let's do a sound demo. Okay, next. we're back. And I'm not going to do a demo just yet. That's going to come up in the next segment. Uh, reason being is I wanted to go over some of the specs, uh, uh, and as far as weight and that, and then go over some of the issues I had or the issue I had with this particular guitar. Now, if you've uh, seen my short, and it seems like it was forever ago, I think it was a couple of weeks ago. So, uh, yes, I have two weeks in between the first segment, and then what I'm going to do is finish up. So I did remember to put the same shirt on. Give me that much credit. Anyways, uh, what had happened, I had a bunch of videos recorded. Uh, stacked up and I released those and then I went on vacation and then, you know, kids got, you know, same crap. Uh, anyways, so uh, this did present a challenge if you saw my short. Uh, this particular bridge here, and I have this all apart, um, the holes, and I'll try to get it here real quick. Uh, it's probably not going to focus, um, but the holes in the bottom here were or are too small. I had a string. Yeah. So what had happened, what happened was, um, I was, I wanted to do these specs, you know, I was going to do the weight. I'm going to do the output of the pickups, which I will get to. And I wanted to open everything up and show you what it looked like. Uh, get a little more detail on this one. See if that, uh, if people like that more. I usually try to focus just on the sound and you know what it's made of and then what I think of it, any issues or you know how you know it maybe it's really good. So I I went ahead, took it apart, and I wanted to get the strings out. Well, I couldn't get the damn strings out. The uh the ball ends were completely jammed in there. Um now I haven't put another set of strings on it. So initially, you know, I, I just thought I was an idiot, you know. Well, more of an idiot than I am. And so, I, I mean, I got an ice pick. Here it is. I was just kind of trying to tap it in there. Then I started, you know, it's, it's never a good, uh, a good thing when you're on your bench and you're working on a guitar and you've got some sort of a hammer in your hand. Uh, things generally are not going right when you have some sort of a hammer, unless you're tapping in frets, which... It wouldn't have this metal end on it. So, yeah, I'm in there and I'm, I'm getting pissed. You know, as it goes on, my the, the hammering's getting harder and harder, and I'm realizing, okay, I'm going to break this thing and I'm not going to be able to send it back. I did get it from Amazon, and uh, I try to do uh, um, a lot of Amazon 
uh, bargain guitars for this specific reason. In the event you get something uh, like this, just send it back. You know, there's really, the only thing you're out on is, you know, one, you're disappointed that you didn't find that diamond in the rough. And, you know, two, you got to spend the time to box it up and take it back somewhere. But you're not out the money. That's why I like getting stuff from Amazon. All the others are pretty good, but it's just Amazon. There's a reason why they're so freaking big and getting bigger. They make it too easy to buy and return stuff. So anyways, off of that. So then I thought back into my third grade or whatever it was, science class. Let me go ahead and throw this in the freezer. Let this maybe expand a little bit. And uh, that worked. I got uh, about three of them out and then it started to warm up and they got stuck again. So I threw it back in the freezer uh, and then hammered the rest out. So now what I don't know yet, and we're going to find out after I cut this segment, I don't know if it's just, you know, whatever their uh, crappy ball ends. Now nah, you can't see that. Uh, were, they're just were cheap and they were too damn big. Or did they really just screw up and not make these holes big enough? It could be a thing where they're all like this. You know, they make them in batches. And this whole batch, whenever these were made, are all screwed up. I don't know. So I'm getting dangerously close to the time. <laughs> where I can't return this guitar, so I need to find out quick. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I let it, uh, I froze it again and got them all out, and here we go. So, um, let's get to the specs of what I wanted to do, and let's go over to this one, and yeah, it, yeah, it's about six pounds, 15 ounces. That's a good weight. That's almost seven pounds. Uh, it's funny, when I first said it, I kept getting like nine pounds something. I was like, holy shit, that thing's heavy. And I lift it up, and it doesn't feel that heavy. And I think I had, you know, I had it lopsided or something. You know, it's this kind of shit I do. Uh, and in kilograms, for those of you that are smart and are on the uh, uh, metric system, um, I'm in America, and we, we still do the, uh, what is it, Imperial? So three, uh, 3.14 kilos, um, it means nothing. I wish I knew the metric system. I don't. It, you know, it doesn't mean crap to me. It makes so much more sense too, but it doesn't if you're me. Uh, so six pounds, 15 ounces, pretty good. Now let's go to uh, the output of these pickups. Um, I, now I don't have strings on it, so... Uh, you tell me if this is a stupid thing to do. I, I, I just figured I'd get the same uh, output. So here we go. We're on the humbucker. And let's get that on there. And that is 4.91. Is that 91? Yeah, make sure it wasn't a 7. I should have put something uh, Lego thing. Maybe help focus this better. All right, so 4.91, that's the bridge, bridge middle, 2.51, middle, 5.07 it looks like, middle and neck, 2.6, and the neck, 5.25, woo! Burner, folks, this thing has some scorching pickups on it. So, uh, yeah, it's not going to, uh, uh, you know, I, I don't know whether that's, I've never paid a whole lot of attention on what that really does. Now, I understand, you know, they're hotter or something, you know, it'd be a louder pickup, but this might be a nice warm sound. It may not be that nice, bright, snappy sound, or maybe it will. Let's find out what that's going to do for us with these, what seem to be, to me, lower output pickups. Let's hook this thing up. Well, let's string it up first. Holy shit. String it up, hook it up, next. All right, tuned up and ready to go. So what I will do is we're going to start here in the bridge position, and this is just going to be the clean, uh, clean setting at first. I'm going through my 68 Deluxe Reverb. And uh, everything's pretty much at noon. I'm at five on the bass, five on the treble, 
had to do that with these pickups. More on that later. And then I have the volume at about five running into my Volt 2 audio interface into Reaper. Yes, I'm using Reaper. So here we go. Here is the clean. Uh, I do have reverb on my deluxe reverb. Whoops, I got this little bracelet on here. It kind of choked one of those strings off. But there you go. It is pretty bright. Uh, I would say maybe a little brittle, uh, but we'll reserve uh, the, all the full comments later. And I will say again, why the hell didn't they put aged white pickups on here? This bright white knobs and tip and pickup covers just really looks dumb on a guitar that's relict. So anyways, let's go to the uh, second position here, and that is the bridge and the neck pickup. Okay, right down the middle. All right, let's hit the middle and neck combined. Second fret on the E string. Damn, there we go. I did not catch that until now. Um, yeah, it looks like that nut may not have been cut deep enough on this thing. Uh, you know, the neck was uh, pretty straight. Uh, so, and it's just really that, uh, that, well, yeah, I'm going to have to get a file there and just uh, cut it down a little bit. Now, well, that's unfortunate. So, let's go to the neck pickup. All right, that, you know, the neck pickup's not bad. I like the way that sounds. Um, I didn't notice, I'm gonna put a little uh, tidy whitey uh, JHS compressor on this uh, to give you an idea how it will do if you're doing typical Strat sounds, you know, uh, like funk or something. <laughs> Pretty good. Let's go to the other in between there, the neck and the, uh, uh, the middle position. bad. All right, neck pickup. Pretty good. Um, let's turn that compressor off and let's hit it with a little bit. Of, I'll put just this, some slight uh, a DD3 uh, digital delay from Boss. Just a little bit. And let's give it some overdrive. Uh, this is an SD-1 uh, Boss Super Overdrive, and I have it up just a touch, about a quarter of the way. Here is the bridge pickup.
not too bad. Uh, it's a little tinny, little tinny, little brittle, whatever you want to say. trying to play a little uh, communication breakdown there. Totally flubbed it up at first, but yeah, you get the idea. Pretty decent. Uh, let's go to the middle pickup. Let's try that on the bridge. adaptation of uh oh god what is that song john may on the blues breakers ah, i can't remember it somebody tell me in the comments i'm sure you know it uh but yeah it's uh it's not too bad with overdrive let's let's hit it with some distortion here see what see how it does Like the way that sounds on those single notes uh <laughs> god i do not know how to play thrash good lord anyways i was trying to give you a feel for uh you know what it sounds with some dis uh, distortion on it and you, you know with the single notes it was god it's just uh it just doesn't sound good it could be it's the low output i mean they're they're cheap uh you know i paid 90 uh 95 dollars for it uh last i checked these were going for 169.99 um you know for that price i i wouldn't uh i would say no on this i would uh if i paid 170 for this thing i would definitely return it uh, probably before i've got the uh the strings out of the out of the bridge but you know, if you can get it for what I had, around 100 bucks, I, I would say it would be a recommended mod platform. And that's what I'll do with this. I'm not going to return it. I definitely will replace these pickups and see if I can find some that are like a cream colored and then change the knobs and the tip. And uh, I'm going to change the tuners. I have uh, ones I had on another guitar that were, uh, you know, top post uh mounted strings more the vintage style these are kind of a vintage whoops uh a style like a cluson uh you know deluxe style tuner but they're not they're the side uh, uh side posts there where you would uh mount the or string it through the side uh so yeah i would uh this would be one for the current price this is my first return it uh, although I am going to keep it and I'll just mod it with some stuff. You know, I can uh, make some videos out of this. I'm going to have to fix the nut. Um, but, you know, with the bridge problem, the nut and the pickups just not sounding that great. Uh, I would say definitely skip this one. Uh, and if you, you know, happen to buy it from Amazon, you can return it. So uh, it, this thing looks good. Uh, it feels, I like the neck on it. Uh, the frets definitely need polish. They're a little rough. Um, I did uh, put some oil on the board uh, to uh, put some moisture in that. Um, yeah, it's, it came with a nice gig bag. <sighs> Look good on paper and yeah, not so much when you plug it in. 
Uh, too many uh, ir irritating problems for me to recommend this guitar to anyone in this, in this price range. So, give it a return it. I will keep it, however. And if you haven't, please subscribe to the channel. Give us a like. Throw a comment down there. Uh, any recommendations you have or anything you'd like to say, go ahead and do it. I greatly appreciate it. Please remember, keep rock alive.